fellow is his name, Mike Jack. He's from the Institute of Toronto. Thank you all for attending. I'm not going to see a lot of our faces already here. So, inshallah, our brother Rahat Khadr is coming in right now. And uh, inshallah, we'll be good to go a little bit. Are we okay?
state of Islam. Uh, so, Islamic institutes want to relate this authentic knowledge, the legacy of Prophet, which has been transmitted by generations of scholars, giants of the Islamic civilization, the great imams, intellectuals like Ibn Ghazali, Ibn Khaldun, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Al-Qayyim, and many hundreds of others who devoted their entire life to pass on to us the authentic Islam, but they adapted it to their own conditions. There is a principle, a golden rule in fiqh, ta'ayyur al-futiya bi ta'ayyur al-zamani wa maqa. Fatwa changes in the corners to changing times and conditions. What do we mean by that? There are constant principles, universals in Islam, but then there are application of these principles which may change. And that's why we have diversity of schools of jurisprudence. Even in a single school like Hanafi school, we have different rulings even in different times. In the Shafi school, then we do different options, different rulings from the same. The same in the case with the Hanbali school, which is considered to be very, very textual or textual in depth, and yet even Imam Ahmad. Any issue you take and you ask what is the view of Imam Ahmad, there will be sometimes 10 views that you put And the same is the case with the Maliki school, and you heard Abdul Abdul Hakim Jackson talk about this giant, the mountain. So we are, we have great courses here to break the lines from the first generation down to the modern times. And I taught this course five part. So of course I'm not boasting we can do full justice to all of these great personalities, but we need to introduce them to everyone so that we are inspired by these great lines of role model this was Allah Rasulullah. And then the four caliphs and the great commands, the great awliya of Allah, there is no shortage of such individual in the Islamic history. So I would ask you to be part of this institution. We teach Hanafi Fikri, we teach Maliki Fikri, we teach Shafi Fikri, we teach Hanbali Fikri, because we want to break this sectarian narrow mindedness. We need to look at the fiqh as a rich tradition and it is that every Muslim should be proud of, even if you are a Hanafi, you should be proud of the contribution of Imam Shafi. Let me explain to you a miserable, a sad state of this Ummah. I used to be Imam in Jami Mosque, we had seminars with the great Imams. And I was talking about Imam Hanifa, and one of the, some of the students from the stage who attended the lecture went back and told the Isna president, Dr. Zaki Hamad, that Sheikh Hamad Kuti is a fanatical Hanafi. So when he met me, he said to me, this is what one, one person reported to me about you. I said, Sheikh Hamad, I'm coming from a Shafi background. I come from South India. I was raised as a Shafi. I, I was trained as an Arab in a Shafi school, but of course I went forward to do my advanced studies and converted to students. But when I talk about Abu Hanifa, I talk about him with utmost respect. Because Kunul Fubai are the Arabi Hanifa. All of the Jewish are dependent on Imam Hanifa. Because if you want to learn fit, master the work of Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi. So this is our approach to the great demands. We appreciate the work, and of course we appreciate the real tasawwuf. Authentic tasawwuf, it is part in the heart of Islam. And we want to transform the character, transform the mind, so that you are, you can take over Future of Islam, inshallah. The Allah subhanahu wa Islam is the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's an honor for me and you to serve this. Program.
Kristus insyaallah dan Islam ya Allah kepada kita. Islam berbuat is an ascendant. It's not going to go down even though the situation may be despondent and deep and sad. But we must want our God help us to join this kind of special. We want this to be a, a lesson of Canada. It's a big step we are taking. Inshallah, we will do that. So I want you to go to our website and look at our curriculum. And of course, you can also go to Islam.ca and all Islam.net. Alhamdulillah, I have a right person today. I gave her advices on Sharia issues, on fitness issues, marriage, and things like that. You must want to Allah help us to leave behind us footprints in the science of life. تلك أخارنا تذل علينا فانظروا بعد الآن إلى الآخرين إن أبريك جانسة هذا الفرقنس التي أبدأت بهاي في السانة السفلاية أكتب يوم أبوان إذا أريد أن تعرف ما كانت الناس في الأرض لك أن هذا الفرقنس في السانة التي أبدأت so we want this institution to be a legacy speaking for me as Imam Bukhari said, when I stand before the Lord of the Worlds, I will say to my Lord that here it is, my love is now. I love you, so I have dedicated this work to you. So we want to dedicate this work, this great institution, for the love of us, Imam Bukhari. I exhort you and persuade you to join us in this great enterprise. Dr. Tariq Al-Muran is here, by the way, his father, I was a Muslim of his father, and it is an honor for me to meet the great son. And actually, as a high school student, I grew up waiting anxiously the arrival of Al Muslim, the great general that his father was a leader of. Let us welcome Dr. Tariq Allah, indeed one of the great intellectuals in the contemporary world, inshallah. And we have the same vision, we are strong, to help us to honor him and learn from him and to be inspired by him, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. I won't take time to introduce the third Ramadan. Welcome to all of you. Uh, as he makes his way up, I just wanted to let you know that we have two books that are on sale. His most recent book, Islam and the Arab Awakening. We're selling it at the discount price for twenty dollars, and the other one, Turk Ramadan, what I believe, for fifteen dollars. So they're available outside, inshallah. I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Turk Ramadan, and inshallah we will go until Salat al Maghrib, which is another twenty minutes, twenty-five minutes, and then we will have a very short and rapid discussion after that. So Dr. Malaka. <coughs> Sometimes in 
very difficult time leaving the country, leaving the rules and coming to another country. This is an experience of the past and it's not the, the, the vision of the future. And what is important here is to understand that uh, when you see that in the age of Muhammad and of the bias of Islam, and you can see in this country, this is the starting point of your responsibility. No one, well, no, no one in the West is preventing you from saying that. No one. You can see, even though some people may uh, dislike Islam or target Islam, we have races, we have Islam folks, but the point is that in the light of the rules, in the light of the legal Canadian system, you are free and you are even better in this country than many Western countries. Only you know what you know. For example, you heard about all, all what is happening in France and, and this pressure of the headscarf. In fact, it's not only the fact that you cannot wear the headscarf, it's the whole atmosphere targeting the new visibility of Muslims. And at the end, you feel that as a practicing Muslim man and woman, there is something that uh, they are creating in the atmosphere that is targeting the Muslim. So you don't feel in Canada, no one can say that this is the case, even though we have trends that are targeting the Muslims still. The very important, the, the starting point of our discussion here is we are Muslims, we can say uh, 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 that we are, and we can implement our religion. So the five pillars of Islam, Salah, Islam, all this, this is accepted in this country. Now, having said that, is when you look at this society, being uh, And being a Muslim, you understand that from the very beginning, our understanding of Islam is not only by saying we have the rights of people, we have rights. It's true, you have the rights and you, you can be a Muslim and you say that you have a lot and you are Canadian Muslim, a Muslim Canadian. Now, the point when I say that I repeat that you need to understand the religion is in fact for you in this society and had it better to come and to bring something to your society. People keep on saying, you Muslims, you have to integrate. You Muslims, you say to yourself, I need to contribute. I need to give something to this society. I need to be part of this society. And then the first attitude is, uh, what do you give to this society? First, let us be clear as to what Islam is telling you before you have to say to people. What Islam is saying to you, what Islam is teaching you is be careful, this life has a meaning. That you are not here by accident. There is a purpose in your life and this life has a meaning. And if, for example, you listen to your mothers and your fathers that you can do this, you, can, you can't do that, you have to act uh, in a good way, you should be people of uh, uh, etiquette that you need to have and, and uh, uh, limits in what you are doing, that you have to avoid things, it's to say what? In fact, what you have to do is to please Allah and, in, and what you have to do is to respect yourself. When it is said in the Quran, Allah of the Quran, that he had an dignity to human beings, the first thing that you need to understand is that you have to respect yourself. And how do you respect yourself? You respect yourself by respecting your own freedom. In the Quran, it is said, the man shall, the human being, man shall, the yakhu. Whoever wants, he can, or she can believe, or whoever wants, she or he can. This is Your first responsibility when you come is believing in Allah, it has a meaning and it has, it has to be visible is the way you deal with yourself, the way you respect yourself. So very often the surrounding this world is to put you in a situation where you are pushed to try to please the people and to be accepted. That's not Islam. Islam is not to be accepted by people. The first attitude that you need to get is respect yourself to be respected. And respect yourself here, ask yourself the new meaning of freedom. What is the meaning of freedom? Is freedom to do what all the people are doing? Or is freedom to do what you think is right? 
The Islam is telling you freedom is check your mind and do what is right than what all the people are doing. And this is where, as students and learners, there is you know, schools and there is the culture, the surrounding culture, and we are pushed to do what the people are doing and they all I'm free because I'm doing all what they are doing. So they drink and drink. They smoke, I smoke. When they go, they to clubs and I do the same. This is not freedom, this is just to follow the majority, to follow the people. And they are telling you do what you want, but in fact what Islam is telling you, do you really do what you want? Or do you want do you do what they want you to do? And you follow them. So the first attitude is really as Muslims is to come in this society and to say, I'm trying to be the way I want to be and to respect myself. And this is our first message to Canada. And as young uh, students and young Canadian Muslims, this is the way you have to deal with this society is we are here to show the dignified way of dealing with ourselves. There are things that we are not going to do. And it starts with a very simple thing. The first, you know, many of you are coming from countries where within the country, some of you converted to Islam here, some of you are coming from Pakistan, coming from India, coming from the Arab world or the Middle East. And there is something in your country which is very, very close to this Islamic principle. It's in fact whatever we are, we give. We give. Generosity is the very essence of Islam. You love him, you give to people. Because God, the Prophet has said, is said, the best among you is the best of human beings. It's not the Muslims, of human beings. So you understand that we have to have an open heart. Even if we don't like what the people are doing, we still respect who they are and we give. We give to people. So check in your society, in schools, wherever you are. Do the people around you feel that there is an added value to your presence? That you are giving something to this society? Or are you just here to say, we want you to accept us? And we end up nurturing an inferiority complex in the way we deal with this society. So we need to come with not only we are at home, but we ensure that we are at home at the way we give to people. And there is this dimension of the which is important. Let us, as Muslims, show the way we have an open heart when it comes to solidarity, when it comes to justice, when it comes to respecting the uh, elder people in this society. You live in a society in Canada where the way we deal with, with the elder people is not out of respect. It's as if when you don't make money for the society, you are on the margin of the society. And all people are, are forgotten within the society. That's not the Islamic way. The Islamic way is respect the elder people, respect the people the way they have to, 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 to be respected in our society, in our way to deal with Allah, in our way we deal with the people who educated us when uh, we needed them. So this is the way you have to have a constructive presence in anything which has to do with your heart. And there are simple things that are very important in the way you deal with yourself. Try to have a, 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 a respect towards the people. You know that the Prophet was saying that the Guru Hakeman in the Lehi. Don't talk about someone who is absent except in good terms. It's very important for us to be this presence where we are trying to show to the people that we have values. There are things that will be in your back banking, uh, insulting the people, vulgarity, slang language, we avoid this. This is not our way. Our way is to dignify way in the way we talk, in the way we serve, in the way we interact. And if someone is rejecting you, don't respond with your emotion, respond with your wisdom. What is the heart of our Peace be upon you. If you want to insult me, I'm not going to do this. So our understanding of the Muslim is at the end to go beyond what is the general discourse. They are telling you, be accepted, you are responding, we are giving something in this society. So this is the first dimension, which has to do with your own dignity. And then there is a second dimension, what do you give? And this is where we have to be involved in the 
within the society. We should not isolate ourselves. But in order not to isolate ourselves, we should be strong with our understanding of Islam. Because if you don't understand and you don't study Islam, you go and you are lost to do what they are doing if you are not equipped. If you don't understand your religion, you are going to be lost because they are very powerful. This is a culture, it's a very powerful culture where everything is done to attract your instincts, your desires, where your emotions, and you go. You know, for example, many of you, you like movies, and we know how it works now. It's, you know, even in Hollywood, the movies, the way they are dealing with movies, is based and, and produced by psychologists. They are working on the substance of some movies to attract your emotions. So you have scripts that are discussed through psychologists saying in which way this will attract the people. So you think that you, you, you are watching the movie only with your mind while they play with your emotions. And that's something which is, this is our weakness. So we need to be equipped and be powerful and, and stronger in that dimension. By doing what? Knowing our religion but also in social terms to show how much we want to be involved in this society by solidarity work. And solidarity work means that uh, we should try to be involved in activities in this society and when even we have schools, it's important. An Islamic school is not a school for Muslims. An Islamic school is a school with Islamic principles for all, which is not the same. Islamic principles for all is, as a Muslim, I have my principle, but I'm going to serve humanity. I'm going to serve the people even if they don't share my belief, if they don't share my practice. I'm going to serve them, to serve them, to show them that I'm here to serve humanity because this is what Allah and the Prophet are teaching me. Serve the people. And serve the people starts with a good example. So, if you have, for example, in this society that people are trying to forget the, 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 you know, the, the meaning of life, some by indulging into uh, drinking, drugs, uh, violence, we start by saying this is not our campaign that uh, our brother have, for example, against domestic violence. That's very important. Muslims who are accepting violence against women are not understanding the message. We should be at the forefront of this struggle. We don't, we don't accept this. There is no domestic violence in Islam. We cannot be our uh, uh, wives and, and, and beating the woman is not Islam. So we start with ourselves and we come into the society by saying drugs and, and all the, the, the reasons that are sometimes justified with alcohol, with violence, with uh, justifying bad behavior. This is something that we are not accepting. So we come at the forefront by contributing to the change of the society. In fact, the true Muslim, the Indian presence, is a Muslim presence helping Canada to be better. Are you doing the job? Is this what you are and who you are in this society? And you can sit down and think about, oh, it's very far from me. No, start with yourself. How many people in your, uh, in your family and your uh, among your relatives in the neighborhood, how many people can say today, looking at you, living near to you, how many people can say today that you are helping them to be better? Just take it like this. Your friend, your brother, your sister, even your parents, even your 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 peer in schools or outside. Well, how many today, looking at your life, would say you help me to be better? If you don't help anyone to be better, and you, you don't help yourself to be better, I'm sorry to tell you, you are useless. And the worst that you can be before Allah is to be useless among people. This is the worst. If you are before Allah useless, or perceived as useless among people, it means that you have not understand the very essence of Islam, which is to contribute to the and to protect the values. So I have to finish. So we are going to pray the Bible, inshallah, and as I understood, there will be some questions after that, inshallah. So uh, try to concentrate on your prayer, but still, I have a question. I have a question. 
How many people in your life can say, you help me to be better? And there is none. Wake up. Oh, wow. We are youngsters quite a bit these days, is that why can't we wish the people here uh, happy holidays or Merry Christmas? We're living in this society and it's there, there a celebration. When we have our Eid, they come forth and they wish us a happy Eid. So, I mean, this, this ties in with a little bit of your acceptance uh, this thing here. Similar. That, that's a good question. And uh, I think that I hope dealing with the Western Muslim community that we would have been beyond these questions or these types of questions now. And what I understood by meeting some of the brothers and the sisters from the last few years here, uh, uh, while being in Canada, I, I got this uh, question twice, and this is the third time. Now, there are more than one position for this. Is that you have one position saying, we don't uh, 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 see anything for, about the, 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 the festivals of non-Muslims because we don't acknowledge that these are right practices in the universe because it's connected to the Trinity, it's connected to Jesus. Uh, and the evil position which is to try, even telling you when you are, even if you are in a non-Muslim majority country, you have Christians, you never, because it's based on the Hadith, you never say Salam the first, you respond to a Salam the first. want to be 
faithful to our principles and respecting their uh, culture. Not their culture, because at the end of the day it's also part of our culture, but their festivals, the way they are uh, uh, living with. Uh, and it's always good also in the way we deal with this that when we have our own festivals, we still are open. We should not, for example, I did or I did after, we should not have it among ourselves. It's always good during this day to do something for the people the surrounding, you know, the, 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 just to show that, yes, this is our, uh, I, that we are Canadian and Muslims at the same time, so we show that we are connected to the people. That's, that's also very important. Don't have a narrow understanding of your own festival and don't deny the fact that others have the right to their festival. Um, okay, so we have quite a lot of questions and we may not be able to take all of them. So let's get, uh, is there any, any question from the sister? Yes, yeah. so let's take the sister first. Sorry. I will try to cover some short answers. Uh, I want to ask you, Professor, 
in terms of uh, the role of our institutions like Masajid uh, in terms of the solidarity work. So um, a bunch of uh, friends and I started an initiative called Civic Muslims inspired by a lot of your work. It's just get more of us civically engaged. Um, and we do things like tree plantings, cleanups, blood drives, things like that. And we've had a lot of fun in the six months. Can you ask the question? So the question is in terms of grassroots initiatives like these, uh, what role do you see for mosques in supporting them? Because I've heard two opinions. One is we shouldn't, um, you know, in any solidarity work, sometimes there's negative reactions to solidarity work, right? Um, and some people have said, keep the mosques away because we want those spaces to be protected as prayer spaces. And if you try to get mosques to sign up for campaigns like the Muslims for White Ribbon campaign, you know, some mosques might, you know, get in the spotlight in the wrong way. So what my question is, What's your view of our message and our mosques and our institutions in the West? Should we leave them protected for, as prayer spaces, or do we really try to encourage them to do the solidarity work with us, um, the grassroots solidarity? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, as time calls for in your Western array, and I agree with you, it's like also. I think that what we need to understand now, we need to get, uh, you need to, you want me to repeat the question, is the question is about should we have mosques only uh, focusing on what the mosque is, what people are praying and to protect this space, or do we have to promote uh, solidarity work and solidarity movement uh, for the mosques? And my position on this is uh, too often our brothers and sisters and maybe brothers who thought about building a building a mask or having a mask it, it's for us to create and to show that we are peaceful and, 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 and we are protecting the mask from any uh, social interference or political interference. And I think that this attitude is an attitude coming from us being on the defense. We are a bit scared of the society. We are a bit scared of what the people can think about. But in fact by being scared and by trying to protect ourselves, we are nurturing a sense in the society that within the mass, what is happening is not clear. So, the less visible you are, the more questionable you are. So you are, in fact, nurturing what you are trying to reform by being isolated. It's what I call, you know, the way you yourself sometimes to avoid the problem. And you don't, you're not aware of that. And this is, uh, uh, you know, the, the example that I'm always needing to talk about this is the action that we had at the, the borders when you have, you know, the are trying to, you are, you are coming to the border and you are going to talk to an officer or a, a, a civil servant at the borders. And you think that was, it happened to me, by the way, I was driving, arriving at the borders between the uh, 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 France and, and Italy once, and I said to myself, I'm sure that with the face I have, he's going to arrest me, to stop. And I was driving, and the, the, the cars were going and going, and all of a sudden I was approaching the borders, and the guy who was, you know, the civil servant was there. And then we, when he looked at me, the fact that I thought that he was going to stop me. I started to be tense. And he saw this when he stopped. I said, I knew it. <laughs> and in fact, of course, I myself, with my attitude, thinking that he was going to stop me, I put this in my face and he stopped me. And if I could have been at this place, I would have stopped myself because there was something wrong in my face. And in fact, I thought that he was going to think. And because I thought that he was going to think, he thought what I was thinking. He was going to think. <laughs> get that? This is exactly the way we are with our institution. We think that we are going to think that this is what we are doing, so we stop doing it, and because we are not visible, we say, oh, we are not visible, they are the screen, because there are something happening behind the wall. So the best way to do it is to be assertive. And how do we have to be assertive? By being visible in a very constructive way. And the best is a mosque, like for example in Islamic school. Any Islamic institution should be ethically, socially visible in solidarity terms or in education 
and you have to be connected to the surrounding. The Prophet uh, when he built the, the, the mosque in, uh, in Medina, around the mosque was a group of people, and his father went around the mosque, and he was pushing his own daughter. You have to do the social work. A mosque is a place where you pray, but there is at the center, at the middle of the city, is, there is a place where you show solidarity. So this mentality that we have to be a peaceful place where nothing is happening is in fact the best way for people to think that where nothing is happening, surely there is something happening behind the doors. So I'm finishing. But it's a very important question. Because this is what we have to do. We have to try those institutions that are constructed and positively visible, not only by you know the greatness of the building but the efficiency of the activity. So, solidarity work, promoting vanity into the society, a mosque in the West is connected to the surrounding society. With the school, for example, let the students from the surrounding schools come to the mosque. Come, we have nothing to hide here. Then everything is open. We are open given, we are giving training about this something to students. Solidarity work, anything that, well, for example, we talk about mines. Let things happen in the past that we are against the domestic violence. Let things happen about the, 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 the surrounding social problems that we have. So it's not to make the mosque uh, a political space, but a civic space where we talk about responsibility. And Muslims are always talking first about their responsibility, not about their, 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 their rights within the society. And there is nothing wrong with this. I can tell you something, we have lots of experiences in the West where mosques doing this job. For example, even in London, where we have the East London mosques, dealing with the mayor to deal against drugs. And they are now an ally, and they are working with the, the mayor at the local level to just do the work. And it's, it's perceived as it's necessary because they are efficient, they are at the grassroots level, they are connected to the institutions, they are connected with the citizens. And Muslims are perceived as efficient people. The uh, Imam Salah Shwakesh, when he decided in Brooklyn, no drugs in the region, and he did the job. This is what the mosque is. A mosque is a place where you come in the mosque for Allah and you get out of the mosque for them. Show solidarity. And if you come to the mosque for you and you get out of the mosque for you, in fact, you are confusing this that with my personal business with Allah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't see this as an efficient, uh, positive presence of Muslims in, in the West of Allah. So, Thank you very much.